And good morning, all of you Meadows Golf Center fans. This is Russ Matson coming to you live, unscripted, from the Meadows Golf Center here on Sunday, March 29th. Now, we've had a rainy evening and morning, and so there's nobody out here. And of course, we're all going through the social distancing and more or less, uh, what would I call it? quarantine conditions. Well, I just wanted to talk to you about uh, our upcoming season. In fact, it's heck, it's almost been golf season now for the last couple of weeks in that uh, I've had many members and even walk-ups coming by to, uh, to walk the grounds. Now, uh, the New York State Golf Association, I, I've also looked very carefully at the uh, guidelines uh, given by Governor Cuomo and uh, as I see it, our golf course can remain open. We do have to maintain social distancing. So, for example, if you are to come by and you're not a member, and, of course, I'm encouraging you to become one if you, you haven't yet, you can just go up to our office trailer. And as you can see, we've got a mail slot there. We will be taking your greens fees, which are $12 on weekdays, $15 on weekends. And if you would just pass those through the slot, great. I mean, I'm here just about every weekend. Of course, yesterday was rainy. And I just want to kind of take you out on the course, and we'll just have a little walk and talk about golf and chat. And I'm going to tell you what, what all's going on here. Uh, yesterday... Before this, uh, I guess it was about six tenths of an inch of rain came down. I actually managed to uh, put some fertilizer down. I mean, it's it's actually been a quite remarkable winter and uh, and season. In that, I mean, geez, I've been here for what now? Is this my 20th year? Started in 2001, so uh, I've never been able to open. The very earliest I've ever opened is on April 1st, and so. Uh, it's quite remarkable that we've been playing down here for the last couple of weeks. Uh, I have yet to take the mowers out, though as you can see, things are greening up quite nicely. Uh, I've set the tee markers out, and I've even been putting the flags out. Now, as I said yesterday, I put down a little fertilizer. I want to just show you one of the things that we've done in uh, as a response to this whole coronavirus situation. Uh, yesterday and the day before, I actually managed to uh, replace all of the pin positions so that we have brand new cups so that uh, those of you who have been down here and uh, been dealing with the same pin positions for the last six months now have brand new ones but in addition to that let me just give you a quick look as you can see looking down into the into the cup you'll see that in fact the cup is no longer as deep as you'd anticipated but rather I have set the cups in upside down now we will be putting the flags in there but this way you'll be able to reach in and very easily grab your ball out of the cup without uh, without having to get your paws all over it and potentially spread this deadly coronavirus uh, all over the place so yeah uh, you know we've done that for you guys well, also, of course, because the United States Golf Association and the Royal and Ancient deemed last year that uh, it's no longer necessary to actually pull the flags out of the cup when you're putting. And so many of our golfers, of course, have just been leaving them in there. And I would encourage you, again, in this time when basically that little coronavirus can find its way onto surfaces, I'd encourage you to just leave the flag where it is. Don't bother with it. Uh, I pick them up in the evening. I sanitize them with a little bit of kitchen sanitizer spray, uh, quaternary ammonium as it is, a very powerful uh, antiseptic. So that'll kill that virus, no doubt about it, if there happens to be any on there. Of course, I don't think they could live too long on fiberglass surfaces, but why take the chance? So now I'm just going to walk you up the ninth fairway because I want to talk to you a little bit about golf and geez, talk about social isolation. I mean, why, why wouldn't you come out here if you needed a little bit of fresh air and sunshine? Of course, that vitamin D being a key component in maintaining our immune systems. So, geez, come on out here and take a walk about. I mean, you're using your own equipment, you're using your own golf balls, which, by the way, I'm still trying to work out how I might get the driving range open. I'm thinking that perhaps if I fill all the buckets of balls and let you self-serve and pay through the window as, as I discussed earlier, and then we'll just use those buckets just one single time. 
Uh, I still have to get the water system turned on. I mean, we have had enough uh, really cold weather that I've been reluctant to turn the water system on yet. So I'm not able to wash those golf balls. Now, of course, I would wash those golf balls after you use them and pick them up and then return them to those buckets. But we'll, we'll update that, update you in a couple of weeks on that. For the meantime, I mean, frankly, the ground is too soft for me to even take a golf cart out here. So I don't want to start working on the driving range, picking up golf balls, etc. Now, but again, if you are fortunate enough to be able to find your way here to the Meadows Golf Center, you'll see that even though we haven't had mowers out yet, the fairways remain cut, the tees, and even the roughs haven't really started growing yet. But uh, we do anticipate having to start mowing within the next week or so. Now you see in the eighth hole over there, now we're going back to the eighth and ninth tee. What I wanted to show you was uh, how our first green, which we expanded significantly last year, has come out. Oh yes, I see they've, they've hayed the field out there in those adjacent 36 acres. And apparently now the New York City Department of Environmental Protection has now gained title too, so I guess you'll, you won't be seeing the Meadows Golf Center expanding out those additional 36 holes unless somehow I can convince New York City to lease it to me. I do understand that they're going to be maintaining it as as farmland, but we'll see. But in any case, as you can see here now as we're coming up onto the first green, the first green formerly was up on top of that ridge and I created this second lobe last year and we cut this in using a push mower over the course of several weeks, gradually bringing it down to height of cut. And now it's starting to grow in quite nicely. I expect to be doing significantly more fertilization, reseeding, aeration, etc., to meld that brand new section of first green into the rest of the green. It's coming along quite nicely, though. And, you know, speaking about golf, I mean, I know you've probably heard me say it if you've been down here, but you know, I know that in these crazy times. You know, someone said, yeah, you should be able to go out and take a walk. Well, I mean, to me, that's that's really all golf is and ever was. I mean, I know that everybody likes to keep score and tense up when things go badly. You know, oh, my God, I just shot an eight on that hole, whatever. But to me, golf is really just a, just a walk amongst some fairly carefully manicured grounds so that you can find your ball from shot to shot. I mean, it's an opportunity to get out here and see these mountains, and these fields, and these trees, listen to the birds. So, you know, even if you don't really perform all that well on the golf course, I don't see why you wouldn't want to come out and play anyway, because, I mean, frankly, back in those ancient days when golf was quote invented in Scotland heck it was probably just two guys walking from village to village hitting rocks with their walking sticks maybe taking a swig from a bottle of scotch and walking and talking and just enjoying the enjoying nature and that's what golf is to me I mean yeah if you want to get better at golf if you want to if you want to start you know, refining your technique, whatever, sure, by all means, practice on the driving range, hit lots of golf balls, get some advice of a, from, a, from a good teaching professional, and yeah, you can get better, I mean, if that's your idea of having fun, then yeah, work at the game, it's going to take some work, because it, it really is a difficult game, but hey, while we're out here, this is what I wanted to show you about this year. This year here at the Meadows Golf Center, we've actually decided that we're going to fill in these sand traps. Frankly, as soon as I could pick up a couple more memberships from you guys, I'll be able to purchase a nice, at least 20 cubic yard truckload of top dressing sa of sand. Top dressing sand would be just fine, because as you can see, that's the second hole. Uh, one of our league members and members, Casey, and his friend Dustin helped re-excavate these sand traps that I built so many years ago. 
Here's one by number two. It's going to come into play. And here's a nice deep one that I have over here by number five. Now this, this bunker here, we're going to be removing rock in over the next couple of weeks once we get this rock removed from it. And we're going to have a nice, we'll have a nice place to, to dump a good six inch layer of sand and give you guys the sand traps that some of you have been asking for over the years. And as you can see, these orange flags, we're looking to expand just like we did last year. We expanded the first green. We're looking to expand this fifth green. We're going to create a nice two tiered effect here again. We'll have a nice upper tier here that you can see comes all the way out and basically brings this sand trap now into play. And then as you can see, as it always was, that kind of bowl shaped bunker, a sand trap, uh, putting green, pardon me for not having a script. Uh, that bowl shaped green will still be there and perhaps even between those two pine trees, I might set a, I might just build a sand trap back there at the end of this season to try to catch those balls that go rolling up and through. So this fifth hole is gonna become a very, very interesting and even more compelling uh, golf hole and uh, of course here's our sixth tee and so you know we're gonna try to just make this fifth hole a little bit more proximal to to the sixth tee we might even try to expand the sixth tee by removing all of that uh, that sumac and maybe even taking out the namesake uh, shady trees off of that sixth tee and maybe start even bringing that tee over a little bit into that field because as it turns out in the surveying that the New York City Department of Environmental Protection did I found that my boundary is actually probably another 10 feet out that way so we might re-angle that sixth hole so that that sixth tee is not really uh, in as, as close to this fifth hole as it was. So in any case, hey, I hope all is well with you guys. We're hoping to see you down here pretty soon. This is Russ Matson from the Meadows Golf Center and All-American Barbecue saying take care.